Welcome to Drinks in the Library, the only library where drinks aren't just allowed, they are required. I'm your librarian host, Gigi Howard, and each episode I'll be interviewing a guest about a much-loved book that we will be pairing with a drink for you to enjoy along with us or consider for your next book club meetup. As always, stay curious and support your local library. Hello, Libration Nation. This week, I am talking with Kirsten Fouts. Kirsten is a library customer service supervisor, also a huge reader, um, and she curates a beautiful Instagram at our shared shelves. For her book, she chose From Here to Eternity, Traveling the World to Find the Good Death by mortician Caitlin Dowdy. Um, This book explores all things death, um, aspects of the funeral industry that were very eye-opening, and um, Kirsten and I just had a really great time recording. She is a delightful person and um, really, you know, talked about her own grief story, uh, which was very moving. So I hope you enjoy. Let's get to it. You feel comfortable? Mm Mm-hmm. I do. I promise. All right. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you. Uh, Kirsten Fouts. Do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, So I live in Richmond, Virginia. Yeah. And um, I am a customer service manager. Um, So I love people. Um, Yeah. That's kind of what got me there. Um, I originally was born in Alabama. Oh. And yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. If I talk to anyone with any kind of a Southern accent, it all comes uh-huh. back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stuff. the same way. Like, really? Yeah. Well, once I get down to North Carolina, yes. where my family's from, I talk to my dad. Yes. So anyway, I feel you. Yeah. Same way. Mm-hmm. Same exact way. Okay. So yeah. Southern girl. What brought you to Virginia? Um, I'm curious. Um, so my mom and my brother and I moved up here. Uh-huh. Um, my mom's dad lived here. Mm-hmm. Um, so we moved up here um, a few years after my parents got divorced. And okay. it was just a better opportunity okay. all around for all three of us. So, And we've been here ever since. Yeah. When was that? Oh, I think I was in middle school. Okay. So, so it's I been was, a minute. It's been a minute. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I love it here. I and love did it you here. move to like the Richmond area? Yes. So um, we moved to, uh, yeah, pretty much Chesterfield area. And mm-hmm. we've been, we haven't moved very far. Right. Um, moved around a couple of times, but we, we ended up coming back to the Chesterfield area. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> um, if anyone is listening, you're not familiar with RVA. Mm-hmm proper and Richmond and the Chesterfield. The, Richmond really is like three things. Right. There's Richmond. There's Henrico. They're, they're to the north of Richmond and then there's Chesterfield and they're right. to the south. And that's really when people talk about I'm from Richmond mm-hmm. kind of are one of the three usually. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. So very cool. And you're a customer service manager at a library. Yes. Have you, um, are you like a book person by nature? Oh, I was. Ever since I was a kid, that's mm-hmm. all I wanted to do was read. And then when we moved up here, um, I kind of lost that for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, just family stuff and drama and then and then and then and then and then and um it was actually when I started working at the library in 2020 Uh um and my uh peers my librarian peers Mm -hmm. were definitely like what do you like to read and I was like I'll read pretty much anything yeah so immediately I had a laundry list of books <laughs> that I needed <laughs> to start reading. So, um, cause I had always just read, like reread books that I loved when I was a kid mm-hmm. and just to get that nostalgia back. Yeah. Um, but again, I, I love reading. I love learning. And mm-hmm. so I would definitely say I'm a book person. Okay. Well, and I mean, yeah, that's what librarians, that's what they love to do is <laughs> sit around and recommend books. Right. And might even start their own podcast about exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. So first things first, let's talk what book did you choose? Okay. So the book I chose is um, From Here to Eternity by Caitlin mm-hmm. Doty. Mm-hmm. Um, 
it's uh, from here to eternity, but um, traveling the world to find the good death. <laughs> <laughs> I have to admit, I was like surprised by I I haven't had like a lot of nonfiction picks so far. So, oh, okay. Yeah, and Caitlin Doty, she is a she's a mortician, a mortician mm-hmm. in L.A. Yes, she um, she ha- owned her own um, funeral home in L.A. and she's actually moved out here somewhere. I'm not sure East where. East Coast? Yes, she went all the way across. Oh my gosh. Um, well, it's it's the better side. <laughs> obviously. I agree. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's and I'm I do read nonfiction, mm-hmm. but it's not the most thing that I read. Um, I do enjoy like learning. So like I'll read like a few biographies here and there and, mm-hmm. you know, listen to the audiobooks because I like to hear the actual person who wrote it, you know, mm-hmm. tell it their own story. Um, but yeah, so this was a this was a cool one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will okay, and I haven't told you this yet. Okay. I am like seventy percent through the book. <sighs> I yes. you so we I think you picked it earlier this week. It is a Saturday. We'll spill the beans on that. <laughs> um, and I was like, I got it on Hoopla, so I got nice. the audio book. Um, but then I realized there's there's pictures in it, mm-hmm. so I managed to track down a actual copy. Yes. Um, and I really enjoyed it, and I've learned a lot. That's great. So, oh, um, I'm so glad. Yeah, so. I'm so glad you weren't freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, and we'll get into it a little bit, mm-hmm. but I have you know, experienced death, mm-hmm. um, and you know, I'm not. I'm, I mean, it's clearly very horrible, and grief is hard. Right. But um, anyway, I I am open to it, and I think about it as a part of life. So anyway, yes. but we can talk about the books. But also, so you're not like a huge drinker. Right. But, and also, just nobody has to come on here and drink alcohol. But you did say <laughs> you will drink a beer. Yes. And so I picked, I don't know if I've told you the name of this. This is called a Rogue Dead Guy Ale. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I and love it. Fun fact. Okay. Um, this was my husband, Bill. He doesn't really drink a lot of beer anymore. Mm-hmm. But when he did drink beer, this was his favorite. Oh, so I told him. And he cool. was like, might I suggest? And I, I think it was a good choice. So. It smells good, actually, too. Yeah, it's so, and it's a very pretty, like, amber yes. color. Yes. So we'll see okay. what we think. That's nice. Mm-hmm. It's a little bitter on the end. But it's not too bad. Compared mm-hmm. to some beers that I've had, uh-huh. <laughs> um, my brother drinks all kinds of, like, interesting mm-hmm. beers. Um so, like, whenever he tells me to try one, I'm like, this, this is great. This is great. <laughs> but, no, this is actually okay. Good. not bad. I like it. You know, I do my best. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, I don't drink a lot of beer often. But mm-hmm. anyway, I thought this was, like, the perfect match and for yeah. the book and for you and this so is great. everything. This is great. Good. All right. So, <laughs> um, to me, the most important thing about doing this podcast is like I just want to know like why this book is important to you Mm -hmm. because clearly like stories impact our life and they change us and everything so who were you when you read this book so I read this book um probably the middle of 2021 Mm -hmm. and the person that I was was a very confused between a rock and a hard place <laughs> uh-huh. person. Um, so 2021 was a fabulous year for me. I got married. I got my college degree. Thank you. Um, I had started a new wonderful job at the library. Mm-hmm. Um, but it also came with a lot of grief, a lot of death uh, mm. surrounding me. Um, I lost a lot of family members um, in that, from that year, like, 10 years back it was like almost every year it felt like I was losing somebody Uh and then also that same year I lost um two of my childhood cats within about a month of each other (laughs) yeah and that's I mean that's hard yeah absolutely and kind of the cap of it was losing my grandfather um my mom's father and he was very much like a dad to me when we first moved here 
Um, so that was extremely difficult um, for everybody, you know. And um, for me, the way that I cope <laughs> with uh, things that are difficult is I want to learn about it. Um, so since for me, um, you know, obviously losing anybody is, is hard and it's terrible. Um, but for me, losing my grandpa was like losing a piece of me. Um, so after, you know, everything started to calm down, um, I really wanted to learn more about really what happens to um, the body, like after the fact. Right. Um, and I'm just kind of curious about the funeral industry in general. Um, I'd always kind of been into the macabre <laughs> ever since I was little. Um, like, you know, I um, wore like all black in high school. I was... I still wear all black. Right. I have like right. a bright shirt on, but like 90% of my clothes are black. Right, right. <laughs> um, but like I, I wasn't really, you know, like a goth kid or anything like that. I was just like a little bit different. Um, like, you know, kind of death and things like or surrounding that didn't really bother me much. Um, but when it started surrounding me, <laughs> that's when, you know, it, it's it's not the most comfortable thing in the world. No. For anybody, no. um, you know, and, you know, even with all the research that I've done and the reading that I've done um, about the funeral industry itself, it's still uncomfortable. I yeah. mean, you know, for anybody, yeah. uh, funeral is very uncomfortable. Uh, burial is very uncomfortable. Right. <laughs> you know, just, I, yeah. yeah. So the more I could learn about it, um, the better it kind of made me feel right. in a way. And I think... I mean, just from my experience reading, like I said, 70% of this book <laughs> is like considering all the different ways that death is handled. And yes. I think often as like Americans, we assume that our way of doing is what everybody does. Right. And it's not. It's I not. mean, that's what the story is about. Absolutely. So it was sort of eye-opening <laughs> yes <to> me <laughs> yes um so another cool thing about Caitlin Doty the author is that she also has a YouTube channel mm -hmm. and she started her YouTube channel I thought, gosh I want to say 15 plus years ago mm -hmm. um just started out by making short little videos yes and I've about watched her job. I watched a yeah. couple of them yeah she's really funny she's hilarious and yeah. and that's what makes it much easier to watch you know it's not a very dour video to watch I mean mm -hmm. some of her videos obviously are very real and she talks about very real topics but she brings her humor into it mm -hmm. um so that way it makes it a little bit easier for the watcher yeah, she's sort of like the perfect voice in that way. Right, right. It's always like you got to laugh or you'll start crying. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So, well, one, I'm really, I'm sorry to hear about, you know, your grief story. and um, But I'm glad that you found um, some solace mm -hmm. with this. And I'm looking forward to hearing more about it. Um, so what pulled you in? about the subject. I mean, you just said mm -hmm. you had just experienced the loss of your grandfather, mm -hmm. your two cats, which, you know, anyone, I, sometimes I feel like people who have never had a pet mm -hmm. don't understand. Don't understand. Yeah. It's the same. You spend so much time with mm -hmm. them. And sorry, I can't, I'm going to start crying. I know it's, <laughs> it is. And one of my cats we had when we first moved here. Mm -hmm. And, um, so he was 23 years old uh -huh. and, um, I, he was such a grumpy old man <laughs> by the end. Um, but, um, it's kind of like, so it was similar to, to my grandfather because my grandfather was such a strong personality and mm. he grew up, you know, you could lose a couple of fingers and he'd be like, ah, throw them in the igloo. It'll be fine. <laughs> Let's keep working. You know? So, um, and <laughs> Not funny, haha. -ha. But yeah. funnily enough, you know, what took my grandfather was also what took my oldest cat was cancer. Oh. So that's what, in a way, I always think like, well, that's was the one thing that was going to get them. Nothing else could. Uh, it had, nails. It, exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, what was your grandfather's name? Neil. Neil. Mm -hmm. oh. Yep. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. What? So he was tough as nails. What else was he like? He was tough as nails. Um, he could be harsh sometimes, but mm -hmm. I think that's also, like, how he grew up. Mm -hmm. um, 
but he was so sweet and mm-hmm. so caring and would do anything for anyone that needed help. Mm-hmm. Um, hilarious, had a very dry sense of humor, um, man of very few words, though, as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. Okay. He was a great human being. It's I mean yeah I I don't know my my daughter is named after my grandmother oh, Annabelle yeah. so Aww. and when we named her we were not on this like name your child after like a an old person name <laughs> <laughs> it's really after my grandmother who right. you know, I told her a couple weeks before she died if I ever have a girl Aww. I'm gonna name her after you so that's awesome. Shout out to grandparents right right <laughs> yeah my brother's uh, middle name is O'Neill. Oh. So that's, you know, same thing with my mom. Mm -hmm. You know, she wanted the name to keep keep going. going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm named after my grandmother. Really? Yeah, on the other side of the family. There you go. And that's a tip. And and we just talked about this. My real name is Margaret. Mm -hmm. My nickname is Gigi. Um, But, yeah, I always joke if you ever meet a Margaret... They are always named after someone. I have never <laughs> met a Margaret that wasn't named after someone. It's a family else. name for it sure. It is for sure a family name. You don't just pick that one out of the air. And it's fine. It's beautiful. It is. A seven year old me was not as happy about it, but I'm you know, sure. I've come to terms with it at this point. <laughs> I will start this part. Okay. So the book is like she goes to different countries. Right. And like, t- like learns <clears> about how they handle death there. Right, right. So do you have any of those stories that like really stick out to you as like interesting you would love to tell someone about? Oh gosh. All of them are awesome because each one is so different. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the one that probably hits home the most is actually the first chapters when she was in Colorado and she gets invited to an uh, open pyre funeral. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And um, and it's also where she starts to kind of explain more about what the American funeral industry, mm-hmm. how they work, um, and how most people probably feel like, well, let's just listen to the funeral and we'll let them do everything and and that's really what the American the funeral, funeral home. Inter- yes, yeah, absolutely. Funeral. It's what the industry does is they're like, well, let us take, you know, your loved one off of your hands and we'll take care of everything. Mm-hmm. And in Caitlin's eyes, it's like, mm, let's have a little bit more ritual. Why don't we have a little bit more time with our loved ones? Um, why don't we, you know, find a way to take care of them the way they took care of us type thing? Right. Um, which is still, you know, as much as I love hearing that, it's still kind of scary <laughs> to think about. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, um, that one was just so cool and such a cool way to open the book. Um, because even for her, she was a little uncomfortable, right. um, too. Because even though it was someone that she knew, um, just having this open air pyre, you know, because, you know, the person is covered originally right um but once they put them into the pyre then obviously you know you start start stuff starts happening um (laughs) and people do see it i mean they um the community the people that actually do the funerals they try to keep it to where you don't see too too much um so that way it doesn't you know scar anybody especially the close family members um But, you know, for people that are curious, Mm -hmm. it's like, oh, oh, oh. Surprise. (laughs) Surprise. (laughs) But it's also, um, in a way, to me, I felt like, well, we're all going to end up that way anyway, no matter what we choose to do with our bodies Mm -hmm. once we're gone. We all eventually all become bones and dust. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. I I mean... I um, I started definitely when I was thinking about this book. I was like, of course, we all. If you read this book, first thing you start thinking is like, well, what am I gonna do? Right, right. Um, and at this point, <laughs> I'm lucky because the one I liked the most was the one in. Um, there's one set in North Carolina. Yes. Oh, I'm so glad you got there. Yeah, I can't. I remember what school system. I, I know Wake Forest was involved. Yes. But it was up. Was it? Um, 
UNC Pembroke, maybe? That sounds right. Well, not sure. Anyway, so in that one, they basically, they're figuring out how to make your body compost. Right. Which ecologically is, it's the best way for the earth. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very cool. But I I do wonder though, because it's like, hmm, what type of person would want to do that? And I could see, you know, people that want to, like you said, put themselves back into the earth and be useful in right. that way. Um, and I even thought too, cause like my mom knows what she wants to have done, mm-hmm. but I was like, mm, no, my mom definitely couldn't do that. She doesn't like the dirt. She does. <laughs> She's, does she want to be buried? Um, she wants to be cremated. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, you're saying she doesn't want to, she would not want to become She compost. would not want, no, <laughs> you know, and it's also one of those things too, like, you know, um, when this kind of, after this book came out and more states were thinking about doing mm-hmm. um, composting um, for the dead body, it was very much like, do you really want to use mom to, you know, plant your flowers? And they made it just a very bad thing. Like, <laughs> and I would they, almost say, like, yeah, it would be really nice to consider right? like, a plant. And that would be like a continuation right, right. of your love. Right. You see. Exactly. And that's and, and we see that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, again, I feel like for the quote unquote norm, mm-hmm. Putting your hands into grandma may not sound great <laughs> to a lot of people. And, and, well, and then we also using the term mom. My mom who is listening, I know this is not what you want, okay? Don't worry. Same here, mama. I know. I know. Yeah. So we um, just talking. I had a cousin who passed away um, about two months ago. Oh, I'm sorry. Expensive. Thank you. Um, uh, but I went down to small towns in North Carolina where my family's all from and you know we had I've grown up going to this tiny cemetery mm-hmm. in Bladenboro shout out to Bladenboro North Carolina <laughs> whoop whoop, <laughs> whoop, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where you know my dad's side of the family and going to my grandmother Annabelle they all are there mm-hmm. and um so we're there um and we're like looking at all the graves and everything. Mm-hmm. And my parents are like, and this one's ours right here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, so is, you already have them ready uh, to go. Yeah, well, I don't know. I don't know if I'm in the clue. To, I guess maybe. But anyway, it's fine. Also, it's fine either way, Mom. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I was just like, oh. <laughs> Great. <laughs> it's very surreal. It is. It's very yeah, well, surreal. And it's one thing to go through it. Like you were saying, you had an experience where like across 10 years, like mm-hmm. a lot of people died. I had that growing up very sadly. I lost two uncles Aww. to AIDS. Oh, gosh. Um, and then my grandfather and then my uncle died mm-hmm. the next year. And it was just kind of like in by the time I was 13, I think I had gone to like five or six like right. close and my other grandparents my other grandfather died too so mm-hmm. um I'd gone to like a several funerals right. by the time I was 13 and like right. you know that's it wasn't normal mm-hmm. at the time and it was, none of them were my parents mm-hmm. um which obviously I'm very grateful for but still it's, it's a lot and like my family um my dad's side of the family is very comfortable with like um open caskets Mm, mm-hmm. And I think I'm fine with it, like, mm-hmm. but I know there's a lot of people that are like, they don't want to see the body or right. anything, and it looks, the body looks so different. It does, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. After, and I think it might be the embalming yes. part of that as well. Yes. Um, when I went to one funeral a few years ago at this point, and it was my stepdad's father, um, another very strong man, Mm -hmm. you know, biggest hands like ever. (laughs) Um, And uh, same thing. He wanted to be cremated as well, but to be able to have a viewing over the weekend, Mm -hmm. obviously they have to embalm the body. Um, Well, I, let me take that back. You don't have to embalm the body. Mm -hmm. It's something that they suggest if you want to have a viewing. Um, But yeah, I went up and I was like, hmm, that doesn't look like him at all. 
at all. And and that's when I my kind of research went into even more about learning more about the recomposition and um, mm-hmm. what are some options if I don't want to be embalmed, yeah. you know, because I'm not one personally to take a lot of medication. I'm not one to put a lot of things that aren't supposed to be in your body in your body besides, you know, donuts and cheese, and uh-huh. all, all the good foods. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, it kind of makes me think, you know, like, do I really want all those chemicals and stuff like mm-hmm. in me to uh-huh. preserve me for even longer when eventually I'm just going to be yeah. in and the dirt anyway? Is it good for the, I mean, for the dirt? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe. the dirt doesn't care. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're embalmed and you get put into a casket, you also get put into a vault. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like you are in a way protected mm-hmm. from the dirt itself, which mm-hmm. is kind of another thing I feel like can scare people. It's like, oh, well, you're putting me down in the dirt. And then the, the funeral home is like, well, you won't be touching the dirt. You'll be protected by this casket and everything. But... But the things that happen to the body, Mm -hmm. once, you know, the body starts to get rid of all those chemicals and everything, it is, this is gross, but it's literally like you're going to be swimming in your own soup. (laughs) (laughs) It's reality. Right, right. So, um, so that's, I've been kind of going back and forth about what. I want to have done. And, and mm-hmm. my husband has told me before, he was like, I eh, just put me in a pine box and put me in the dirt, you know, <laughs> simple, short Easy. and sweet. Yeah. Right. So, um, so that's where we started talking about a little more about that and like green burial and mm-hmm. all that kind of good stuff, which, mm-hmm. you know, is another good thing. You're yeah. just putting the body directly into the ground, yeah. no embalming, anything like that. Okay. I read a book and I wish I had gone over it. Um, by R. Eric Thomas. He wrote, Congratulations, the best is over. And he talks about his um, his father-in-law mm-hmm. passes away. And they have, it's like in, um, it's like cremation, mm-hmm. but it, it's like a water cremation. Yes. Do you know about that? That is aquamation. Aqu- yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is aqu- Thank you. I would not have known that. But yes. Yes, so aquamation is um, there. A lot of people are trying to make that legal in a lot of states. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, for most states, it's legal for our pets, but it's not quite legal for humans yet. Mm-hmm. Um, and <laughs> kind of going back to the soup, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> um, right. um, what aquamation does is you're basically having a spa day. Um, your body goes well, in. I love that. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Um, and your body goes in, you know, uh, kind of a similar uh, looking machine as to if you were cremated. Um, but it's it still involves chemicals, but it's mostly water. And it, it basically gets so hot that your body just melts. Mm-hmm. And then it, what's left just gets flushed away and then Uh you can still have your ashes and everything as well Um, and in a way it's that's actually even better for the environment because if you're traditionally cremated Mm -hmm. and especially if you're embalmed before you're traditionally cremated then um every everything that it was in you all those chemicals and everything goes into the air oh with aquamation it just goes basically into the sewer system. Yes. And yes. And that was one thing I was surprised about in the book mm-hmm. is I always thought cremation was like so efficient and mm-hmm. better for the environment. Mm-hmm. But they were talking about all what is the carbon emissions that are released right. from it. Right. And then if you have. Yes. Any fillings. Any fillings in your teeth. Um, right. Or if you have. um Well, I, I guess no, because if you have like a um, replacement like mm-hmm. knee or whatever, if you're traditionally cremated, then that's still left behind. Okay. Um, and you can donate that um, oh, to be <laughs> recycled, at least that. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. And um, it's just so interesting. It is. Yeah. Yeah. It. I mean, I learned a lot. So we did, um, so we talked about Colloway. We talked about Colorado. Mm-hmm. She goes to Mexico. Yes. And there, they just, like, live with the – was it Mexico where they lived with the – no, it was – I think um, it was Belize. 
Belize. Mm-hmm. They lived with the. They had the bodies there with them. Right. But then she does go to Mexico. She does go and to Mexico. That's the, we all love Dia de los Muertos. Yes. Um, that was cool. Do you want to talk about that? Or? Sure. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. Um, so the Mexico chapter was very cool. Um, like you said, they um, talk about Dia de los Muertos. I mm-hmm. probably said that very wrong. Um, but We're doing our best. Right. People. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, the the neat thing that I'm, I don't remember the names or anything in that chapter specifically, um, but they take the skulls of the dead mm-hmm. and they decorate them <laughs> and and they you know create effigies for mm-hmm. the people that have passed and they give them bagels and <laughs> yes. so much different food and um you know it's it's a it's another way of just celebrating the people still even mm-hmm. af- way after they're gone mm-hmm. um yeah it's such a great tradition yeah i love it especially that one illustration where it's so many people are in the cemetery mm-hmm. and just hanging out. Yeah. You know, with their loved ones. Yeah. And it it makes it it because if you you know, if you experience grief, mm-hmm. it never goes away. Right. And so I I guess, you know, grief is the other side. It's when and I tear up very easily, oh. so forgive me. No. But yeah. Grief is the other side of when someone you love, if that love, you can't put it there right. anymore. Right. But right. it doesn't mean that that love doesn't exist. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Um, and that's why I, I think I enjoyed the chapter so much where they, the cultures stay with their dead. Mm-hmm. Um, because I feel like, you know, obviously – it is your choice what to do mm-hmm. with your body once you're gone. Oh, Mark. I'm like, oh, gee. No, 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 don't, don't, don't. I, I am like the, I am the person that like cries over like the polar bear commercial. I mean, like anything like Good Morning America. I'm just like sobbing the entire time. Like I, I love it. It yeah. means that means that your your heart is right there, and that's awesome. Or like I'm a little crazy. Oh no, no, no. You are not. Not at all. Yeah, no, anyway, sorry for No, crying. no, you're fine. But but yeah, it's like um again with those cultures, they stay with their dead. They take care of them the way that they were taken care of by them. Yeah. And and sometimes, you know, that's why I worry so much, you know, if I ever um have children, mm-hmm. is if I do choose to be cremated, I wouldn't want someone to just hang on to my ashes. Yeah. Um, you know, but at least if I'm you know, buried in the ground somewhere, you know, um, they would have something to visit, you know, not necessarily that I would, I wouldn't want them to feel like they were obligated to come take care of a gravestone or anything Mm -hmm. like that. Or even if I'm not just, you know, if this ever becomes legal, (laughs) you know, just out (laughs) in the middle of a beautiful forest somewhere, Mm -hmm. you know, and just, you know, recompost my body and, Mm -hmm. you know, create something beautiful out of it. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so, cause is in a way interesting, choose a nicer word, um, for people, you know, keeping the skulls <laughs> of their grandparents, mm-hmm. um, you know, putting cigarettes in their mouth or anything like that, <laughs> You're putting sunglasses on them uh-huh. or whatever. Um, it, for me, it would be nice to have something to go and visit, yeah. um, just so I, I would keep that yeah. with me, you know? Yeah. I mean... I, as much as it, it is nice to have like a place to go and mm-hmm. to remember them, and but then in a way it was just kind of also nice to see like the later celebrations. Sometimes mm-hmm. I feel, you know, with the way that we as Western society deal with mm-hmm. death is, you know, you go, you have very a checklist almost <laughs> right of right. this is you go, you have the funeral, the. <laughs> You know, I, like I said, I just went to a funeral like last month mm-hmm. and, you know, it, I, it was very sad. And everybody's just keeping it cool. And I'm like, right. I know your heart is like. Oh, and absolutely. It was, you know, they're close family members. Like, I know your heart's right. broken, but you have to stand and greet everybody and say hello mm-hmm. and welcome them to your 
your mom's funeral, right? You know, which right. was really hard. And um, so as, as a guest, I'm just like trying to be nice, but in my head, I'm like, right? If you like want to like just go cry in the corner, right? I right? Understand. Right? And and that's another great thing about um, the Mexican culture is it gives them that time every year mm -hmm. to go back and feel that grief mm -hmm. and, you know, be next to a gravestone or something and just mm -hmm. weep and yeah. get it out. You know, yeah. um, there was, um, I recall there was one little paragraph where, um, like a whole family was visiting grandpa or something and mm -hmm. like lit beautiful candles and put all this food and, um, flowers as offerings and, mm -hmm. and, um, and Caitlin made a point of saying that, like, one of their newborn babies was just fast asleep uh -huh. next to the grave. Yeah. You know? Just yeah. like it's the most normal thing. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and in a way, it, it like, I was joking when we went down to North Carolina because mm -hmm. it was like, I'm not going to drive this far without swinging by a few cemeteries. <laughs> <laughs> and we did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, I took Annabelle, and I'm like, you know, she, she had actually never been mm -hmm. to, um, you know, either either of the cemeteries that we went to, but the main one mm -hmm. um, that's in the main one that's in Bladenboro. And mm -hmm. so I'm just like, here, we'll take a picture with your great-grandparents. Right. Sit down there. Right. And she's, you know, it was... Um, she was very cool about it as, oh, that's like, great. a nine-year-old, but then... You know, later it did bring up a lot of questions about mm -hmm. like this process, and it was her first funeral experience. Right, so, right. Anyway, sorry, I feel like I'm gone off on my own little tangent, no, which I no. am known to do. That's all right. <laughs> I am too. Yeah, and it, it's. Um, I like that you said that because when um, when my um, father um, that still lives in Alabama, when mm -hmm. his uh, father died. Um, I was still in middle school, mm -hmm. and we uh, flew back down there for the funeral. Mm -hmm. um, so I was a little older than your daughter, but that was really my first experience mm -hmm. of a funeral. And um, and we had it at uh, where my uh, papa preached in our tiny, tiny little Baptist church mm -hmm. um, where, you know, he was going to be buried just right there in that little cemetery. And and I remember, like, looking, I was like, okay, so this is where he's going to live now? You know, mm -hmm. and and because when you're that age, you don't know. You just, right. you know, see grandpa yeah. and you say goodbye. And, yeah. Um, but it, I think I feel like that experience was uh, a little bit better because we kind of celebrated after the fact. Right. Um, with most Southern Baptists, we had a lot of food. <laughs> I grew up Southern Baptist. Oh, very nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's always lots of food. Always, yeah. Afterwards, yes. that's the whole thing. That's the whole point. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, and that's really where my curiosity really mm. started. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. So I was just is there anything else we need to explore with this title, with this author? Mm -hmm. What What is her sort of takeaway mm -hmm. on exploring all of these different? I feel like um, her takeaway, if anything, it just strengthens her resolve mm -hmm. to even have that closer relationship with our dead. Mm -hmm. Um and like even the the book she wrote before this one, that's uh, she writes a story about how she got into the funeral industry and mm -hmm. um, she started out working in a crematory and all that kind of good stuff. And um, just her seeing from the inside of the industry mm -hmm. how very, you know, hush hush and, you know, oh, no, 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 keep the body away. You know, we don't want to <laughs> we don't want to hurt anybody. We don't want to bother anybody, you know, um, we don't want to traumatize anybody. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's why I appreciate Caitlin's cause so much because she's like, why? There's nothing wrong with a dead right. body. If anything, you know, if this is, you know, a loved one that mm -hmm. you've been with for so long, why are we so quick to just be like, okay, take care of it, please. Mm -hmm. Take it off our hands. That's what we think we're supposed to do. Right. 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 Um, so she's kind of bucking against that a little mm -hmm, bit and saying, mm -hmm. why do we do it this way? Right, right. Which I do think is a really a good thing to do because I do believe, I, I don't know if you know this about me, I um, lived in China 
Really? For just a year. Okay. But it was so eye-opening to me mm-hmm. of how different this culture is. Like mm-hmm. I And I had been to Europe. Um, and to be honest with you, like, America is just like a progression of Europe. Right, right. Um, in right. a lot of ways. And we follow the same culture or we follow a lot of the same practices. But then to go to another country and, like, you know, the obvious thing is that they don't eat with a fork and knife. They eat with chopsticks. You right. can't even get a fork <laughs> in a restaurant, in some restaurants in Beijing. And they invented the fork. Yeah. And oh, they don't I, use it. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> they invented the chopsticks and the fork, and they don't use the fork. <laughs> well, you know, once you get pretty proficient with the chopsticks, right? you can handle But it. But just that, that's just one tiny example. And I feel like if you don't ever experience something that's, like, totally different, mm-hmm. You don't realize. You don't like, realize. You don't have. To, you don't have to do it this way. Right. Absolutely. You could do do something else. Absolutely. But of course, like, and she talks about this in the book is like, there are laws and there are entities, mm-hmm. and clearly, like, there the funeral industry makes money, and absolutely people whose livelihoods depend on this, and I'm sure a lot of wonderful people mm-hmm. whose livelihoods depend on this, but. Because of that, they, you know, have lobbyists and they have people mm-hmm. with money who right. make sure that no one can do it otherwise. Right. And she talks about, like, different religions, like, people who practice in the Muslim faith, mm-hmm. they um, want to be buried within 24 hours. Oh, yeah. It's immediate. It's it's pretty quick. Yeah. And yeah. so if you are of that faith living in mm-hmm. the United States, it's very hard. It's very hard. To do that. Mm-hmm. So... Um, just because of the way that laws are set up here and, mm-hmm. um, you know, laws impact the funeral homes mm-hmm. and how they run their businesses. So, right, right. Um, it was interesting mm-hmm. to consider all of that and to think about what are the options going forward. Right, exactly. <laughs> and, and, and she also um, talks to a little bit about, you know, you can do your research. I know it's not something necessarily that you want to do right after, you know, a tragic death, but, Mm -hmm. but she's like, you know, you can call around and, you know, you can shop (laughs) Mm because, because not, it's not all one price at every single funeral home Mm -hmm. that, you know, you can call around and ask like, Hey, do I have to embalm, Mm -hmm. you know, this person? And, and most of them, again, like you said, it's a money-making industry. So mm-hmm. they'll be like, well, you know, it's probably preferred. Um, you know, we want to make sure that the person stays pristine before, you know, we send them off into mm-hmm. their next space. Um, but, you know, it's – it's, and we rely on them so much because we're in such pain. And we – rely on them to take care of our loved one. Mm-hmm. So we're pretty much like, okay, what, whatever you got to do, just do it, <laughs> you know? And I, don't, I have zero mental capacity right now. <laughs> right, right, right? Yeah. So I totally understand where, you know, if you're in that type of state where it's mm-hmm. like, I just, just, just do what you got to do. Right. Um, but that's why, you know, I like the fact that Caitlin's like, you have options. You mm-hmm. shouldn't have to be afraid of a dead body. You have things that you can still do. Right. Um, you don't have to, I guess, in a way, conform. <laughs> right. And do the same thing, the whole, the same rigmarole with every single loved one that yeah. you lose. And I thought, I can't remember what it was in reference to, but, like, you don't have to be, af- you just said, you don't have to be afraid mm-hmm. of a dead body. And right. I think it was, like, the CDC right. put out a statement and mm-hmm. they were like, although it maybe is unsightly. <laughs> There is nothing dangerous right. or, you know, there's no disease within right, a, exactly. a dead human body. Right, so, right. Yeah, you don't, you literally don't have to be afraid of it. Mm-mm, you don't. And, and I, but I can understand, though, it's still scary because it's like, well, it's, it's them, but it's really not them right. anymore. So it's, there's a very, it's very uncomfy. <laughs> right, yeah. So. Yeah, and it does, I mean... The greatest challenge of being human is being coming to terms with your own mortality Mm -hmm. and knowing this isn't going to go on forever. And what does that mean? 
Right. We don't know. <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> Some people say they know. Right. Hmm. Right. <laughs> But do we really? You're, uh, we're all entitled to right. our feelings. So. <laughs> all right. Um, do we have, is there anything else you want to tell us about Caitlin? I mean, she's very interesting. This is mm-hmm. her, at least her second book. This one is her second. She does have a third one. Mm-hmm. Um, it's hilarious. It's called Will My Cat Eat My Eyeballs? Oh. And it is well, a. Well, hang on. I have a cat. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, and that's what's that's what's so great about uh, that book is the book is filled with nothing but questions from kids about death. Aww. So that is a question that a okay. child has asked. Okay. So it's kind of like if I die in my house, and will my cat start eating me? <laughs> yeah, and I think actually I might get that for Annabelle because, mm-hmm. like I said, we just went to this funeral together. Right. And it did. She was very cool with it, but then afterwards she was like. Hold up. Right. What no. just happened? What, what is going on? <laughs> is this going... <laughs> so anyway, but okay. So yeah, she's she's written a few other books, and now she's on the East Coast. Yes. I'm not yeah. sure where, um, but uh, so she... Like I said earlier, she did own a funeral home in California, mm-hmm. and it was a green funeral home. Like mm-hmm. she still did embalming if that's what the family wanted, um, but they were very much about the ritual and being with mm-hmm. the body, and you know, placing beautiful flowers, mm-hmm. um, it, you know, and uh, maybe cutting off a lock of hair, mm-hmm. writing a letter. You know, she she was very much like whatever you want us to do within legal reason, mm-hmm. we will do it for you. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and she's, she's just really graceful when she talks about death. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's, I mean, she does remind us <laughs> a lot, you will die. <laughs> but, I already know. Caitlin. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, she, but it's like the more information she can give us about it mm-hmm. and the more prepared we could try and be, um, that's really her mission is like, you know, it's kind of like knowledge is power. <laughs> the more you know about it, then hopefully it will hopefully help you and your loved ones make the decision mm-hmm. when it, when it comes time. Yeah. Well, thank you, Caitlin. Yes. Sorry. Thank yes. you, Caitlin. <laughs> uh, yes. Caitlin definitely helped me through uh, a lot of difficult times and with her humor as well mm-hmm. on her YouTube channel, which is Ask a Mortician. I am not sponsored by Caitlin Doty. Um, not, not yet. <laughs> We shall see. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, her her videos are awesome. They're very in, uh, educational, and yeah. and she talks about a wide variety of different things too. Yeah. So they're and they're funny. And, yes. Yeah, and I like the all I the one I watched was like. Um, I'm going to answer one of your questions, yes. and I'm going to answer a question that no one wants <laughs> to know, but I want to answer. Yes, yes. yes. It's, uh, yes. Which I thought was, uh, she's just very, like, cool and confident. And, right, like, right. Just does what she wants to do, and <laughs> people are into it. So right, right. That's that's, it was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, so my last question. Okay. Who would you recommend this book for? Oh, gosh. For me... I would say if you are know that you're uncomfortable about death, um, then this is why I chose this her second book mm-hmm. um, because it goes into all the different cultures mm-hmm. and how they all differently handle it and um, all the rituals that they do. Um, and even still here in America too, mm-hmm. there are some awesome rituals out there. And yeah. you know, again, if, if If what you decide to do with your body, that is your choice. Mm -hmm. Um, But I feel like, and I was still a little uncomfortable reading this book, but I like reading books that make me uncomfortable. (laughs) It just, it it helped me to learn more. And um, so, so yeah, hopefully, you know, if you're out there and you're um, not sure about this topic, Mm -hmm. um, hopefully this book will help you to learn a little bit more about it, but Mm -hmm. then maybe you'll feel a little bit better. Yeah. About thinking about it. Yeah. I I agree. And she's funny. So yes. it makes it it makes yes. it easier. Her wit is very 
nice. Yes. <laughs> and I will say, so I don't know if you listen to the audiobook. She narrates the audiobook. I have not. I, okay. I didn't realize that until I was thinking about it last week. I was like, I wonder if she did audiobooks too. And yeah. she does. For she all does. Three of them. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's very good. So I like that. But I will say the book does have pictures. Yes, it, it does. I, did she draw the pictures? She did know? not. Um, her The illustrator I know is a friend of hers. Um, Landis Blair. Yes. Yes. Yeah. He actually helped her do a lot of her videos as well. Okay. And then and now he's doing something on his own. But but yes. Okay. Yeah. So it was kind of cool. Like you would hear what she was talking about, and then mm-hmm. you would turn the page and would have like a nice little drawing of what right. it looked like. So right. I you know love an audiobook. Always here for it. Yes. But it it was nice to see the pictures. So mm-hmm. I like that too. So yes. Kirsten, thank you so much. This thank has been you. fun. I hope you've been. I hope you've had a good time. I did. I hope you didn't be too uncomfortable. <laughs> oh no! I mean, like I said, I we were joking when we were down North Carolina. Me and my dad were mm-hmm. joking, and uh, my dad told my my daughter. He was like, "Well, unfortunately, in this family, <laughs> been a lot of this. <laughs> we've been to a lot of funerals. We do this a lot." <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, you have to laugh or you're going to cry. Right. That's, right. That's life, mm-hmm. right? So, yeah. Anyway, so tell us um, where we can find you on the internet. Oh, okay. So, um, on, I just have Instagram, mm-hmm. and that is Our Shared Shelves. Okay. Very cool. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank and, you, Gigi. And, and we're going to enjoy this wonderful dead guy. <laughs> Dead guy beer. Dead guy ale. I yes. It's Rogue. It's Rogue. Rogue. That's right. That's Don't right. Don't forget that. All right. Cheers. Cheers. That was another episode of Drinks in the Library. Thank you for joining us today. I wanted to remind everyone that Richmond Magazine is doing their best of 2024. Uh, Voting is going on until April 26th. So if you are so inclined, please vote for Drinks in the Library as best podcast. Um, Other than that, you can find me on drinksinthelibrary.com, on Instagram at drinksinthelibrary, or shoot me an email, drinkspod at gmail.com. Thanks.